UMI adjustable anti-roll bar for drag racing. Let's get it put on. All right, everybody, I've been sitting on this for a couple months now. I think it's about time we get it put on Chaos Theory. So anyway, this is the adjustable anti-roll bar from UMI. This is meant for 82 through 92 F-bodies, Camaros, Firebirds. Some of you guys may be thinking, hey, uh, what's the deal with this in drag racing? This looks like something you'd use on a road race car. Well, it, it's very similar, but also different. Uh, it actually does pretty much the same thing guys so the point of an anti-roll bar is to take force that's being applied to one side of the suspension and kind of move it over to the other side if that makes sense so um, as an example you guys will notice in my previous videos when my car takes off hard the back right hand corner drops and you know this is pretty common on most V8 cars uh, all the power is kind of transferred back to that passenger side rear wheel and the car wants to do this number when it takes off uh, that can also cause the car to want to steer to the left or if the uh, well yeah <laughs> it's going to steer to the left because what happens is you've got a lot of force coming down on the tire on the back passenger side and it's actually lifting the tire slightly on the back driver's side which means it's not going to get as much traction so the point of this is to be able to dial it in to where some of that force that's that's being transferred to the back right hand corner can actually be transferred over to the driver's side corner and kind of equal out so what you want the car to do is is take off level and uh and not like bury one corner but that's that's kind of what this is meant to do uh it's the same thing on a road race application although you usually don't have all the adjustability and everything but you're basically doing the same thing when you go around a corner you know this side's trying to dip down well having a thicker anti-sway bar or anti-roll bar allows you to transfer some of that power over to the or some of that force rather over to the other side uh, instead of just having to run like really stiff springs on all four corners or uh you know you can run really stiff springs and, and still use an anti-roll bar and and uh, uh still transfer some of that some of that force over so Anyway, that's pretty much what it does. Uh, we'll go over adjustment later on after we get it put on, but I'm not going to talk too much more. I just want to get this thing put on. It is cold outside, very cold. It's cold in this garage, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. But I almost forgot, before we do get started, uh, I will put a link to UMI's website, and I will also put an eBay search link, like I always do, to this anti-roll bar. Um, usually it's the same price on the website or on eBay, but sometimes you'll find a seller on eBay that's doing free shipping or, uh, you know, you may get one of those 10, 15% off eBay, eBay days. So, uh, it can be cheaper to buy it on eBay during those times. Anyway, let's get it.
first thing we need to do is remove our factory sway bar from the back. So we're going to start with the end links. We're going to take the end links loose. Then we're going to take the end link brackets loose. And then we have some marking to do before we take the rest of it off. We want to make sure we keep the bolts for this bracket because we're going to have to reuse them. Now moving on down here to the mounts on the axle, we're going to need to remove those necks. But what I'm going to do is something they don't really tell you in the instructions. Uh, I'm going to mark the center here on both sides. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that when I go to put the new anti-roll bar in, and the new mounts, I'll be able to, you know, kind of reference this mark to make sure that I'm getting it centered, uh, you know, directly on the bottom of the axle. So I'm gonna do that on both sides and then remove these bolts and drop this sway bar out. I just wanted to show you guys what we're replacing and the difference. I don't know if you can see that, but here we got this tiny, like this thing's not even as big around as my thumb. Uh, this guy here is huge. This is made out of chrome molly, solid chrome molly. It's not hollow. So this thing is heavy. It does not flex much. So we'll get our dinky little factory sway bar out of our way and focus on this. The next thing the instructions say to do is to mount these. These are our in link mounts for our adjustable in link. Now, I have a little problem, guys. It says here the bracket with four holes installs on the driver's side. Now, as you can see, neither one of my brackets has four holes. And the reason it needs four holes is because you have the two holes that go around the side here and then the bracket wraps around like this and you need these two holes right here. This is for our brake line mount. So it's gonna go right here. I'm not sure what happened. It looks like they sent me two, um, two passenger side mounts instead of sending me a driver side and a passenger side mount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark my holes I'm gonna mount the driver's side mount up here and uh, mark where the hole should be on it. I'll drill these two holes out and uh, we'll get back to this installation process. So we got our holes drilled. We have reinstalled this new bracket using the hardware from our old sway bar uh, in link bracket. And I do wanna say this guys, this is the one part that is gonna require welding. They tell you in the instructions, you can mount it with your original bolts here and you know you can go ahead and mount everything up use that to drive to a shop or somewhere but they want you to weld this plate guys it's not going to be strong enough with just these bolts as a matter of fact you know depending on how much power you make on a really hard launch uh, you could just shear the heads of these bolts off so uh, once all this is done or you know if you have a welder you can go ahead and weld the edges up here uh, I would just personally weld all the way around it. Uh, just be careful of your fuel your fuel lines right here. But um, you are going to have to have this welded. If you don't have a welder, you can go ahead, finish this installation, do what I'm most likely going to do, which is going to be uh, drive this to a muffler shop or something, and just you know have them run beads on both sides of this and maybe around the front side here. Another problem I'm running into. Now I've got my holes drilled and you know everything lines up but an issue I am having is the factory bolt to mount this uh, this brake line bracket. It seems like it's just a little bit too short 
to go through the brake line bracket and this plate so i'm gonna have to find a little bit longer bolt uh, before i can get that secure i think because i don't think that's going to bite through all this so it turns out i was wrong i was able to get it to bite uh, everything is nice and secure now like i said don't forget about the welding thing uh, you don't want to leave that undone but i'm going to go ahead mount the bracket on the other side and then we'll move on to uh mounting the end links so the next thing i'm going to do is get into my little goodie bag here because it wants us to go ahead and mount our adjustable end links now i'm gonna go ahead and say this up front when they send you these end links they send them to you in a neutral position and what i mean by neutral position is they're adjusted to the same length and both of them are in the middle of their adjustment travel okay this is how you want to install them do not touch them from the way they are when you get them you want to uh, you want to install them at a neutral position in the middle of travel just like they send them to you this is your hardware for installing them you have two big bolts you have the two big bolts that are welded to the uh, mounts we just installed so we're going to go under there we're going to hang each end link on each one of our mounts and we're going to install this uh this nylock nut here and we're going to go ahead and torque these down to 120 foot pounds So the next thing we're going to do is install our bushings onto our axle or axle huh we're going to install our bushings onto our anti-roll bar here uh this is pretty easy to do you know it just you pull it out of the bracket it splits open wrap it around there set your bracket back on it should be kind of firm fitting and it's going to spin around and mount upside down like so you just gotta kind of get it you know about where it's gonna be now here's the thing about this you're gonna lube these after you install them you know it's got the little grease zerk fittings here so you can lube these after installation um, what I'm gonna do I've actually got some some grease i'm going to go ahead and smear just a little bit of grease in here i don't want to make a mess because we're going to be sliding this around trying to get it even on the rear axle so i'm going to put just a little bit in there just enough so they don't bind up uh, until i get a chance to lube them permanently back under the car we want to take our u-bolts here drop them down i'm going to try to put these in the same place as the originals because the brake lines are already bent over those one thing you want to make sure of guys is that you do not put these on top of your brake lines if you do you're going to have a real bad day because after you clamp them down you're going to crush your brake line and well you're not going to have any brakes we got Skylar over on the other side no right here I'll drop it down right through there try to get it inside there you go right inside that brake line this is kind of a two-person job because what we're going to do now is we're going to set these on put the uh the side that says umi performance i guess you just put it to the inside yeah it doesn't matter i don't think but what's going to happen here is <laughs> sounds like chime bells out here we're just going to run these up just like that we're going to bring our sway bar up to it and put our nuts and our uh, bolts on there or i'm sorry our washers and our nuts i'm hoping i can use use these in the factory spot like i just said but if for some reason i can't then uh, i'll have to figure something else out all right just like this I'm 
I'm gonna try to start this side and then I'll come over to you. It's gonna have to go up further. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's was. I'm just gonna start this side and then I'll come over there. So like I said, I'm just leaving that hanging and uh, then I'm gonna go over there and help Skylar get his side in. Once you have the anti-roll bar, I keep calling it a sway bar. Uh, I guess it's kind of sort of the same thing. Anyway, once you got that up there kind of loose, what you wanna do is make sure you get it even. Just make sure it's centered perfectly on the axle. You can make you a little mark on top of it there and on the bottom of the axle to make sure you get it even side to side. And then you wanna make sure that your mounts are evenly spaced from side to side. I'm close to the factory position on mine, but what I did is I just measured from the shock mounts there, uh, the shock mounts over, and I made a little line on both sides to make sure they were spaced evenly and at the same place on both sides of the sway bar. Once you've done that, you can go ahead take you a 5 8 wrench and torque these babies down. Now UMI does not give a torque spec for these. Uh, I'm saying somewhere between three and a half and four Ugga Duggas ought to be just fine. I mean, just get it get it nice and snug, guys. You, you know, you don't want it to try to rotate around the axle or anything like that. So after you get those snugged up, I, I wouldn't torque them all the way down yet, just get them nice and snug. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to mounting the front of the sway bar to our end links. Now, you are going to notice the sway bar actually has two holes. Well, that's for two stiffness settings. Uh, the closer, if you use the closer hole, um, it will actually make the sway bar act stiffer. If you use the hole further out, it'll make it act well, not as stiff, it's just a leverage thing. So for drag racing, you want it as stiff as possible. So we're gonna mount it to this closest hole right here. And when we do that, UMI says to run the bolt in from the outside of the car. So. I'm trying to hold the camera and manipulate this sway bar at the same time. See if I can get a little better angle there, guys. So like I said, the bolt is going in. So you want the bolt head on the outside of the car. And you want your, your nut to be on the inside of the car. Funny story. Let me pull this down a second. Oh, wow. My bolt. So, huh, we've got a little problem. It would appear that the holes in this sway bar are either not big enough or the, uh, whatchamacallit, <clears throat> the uh, powder coat has just plugged it up a little bit. So I'm probably going to have to take a drill bit or a file and kind of ream this hole out just to get rid of the powder coat. I think that's all it is. It's just... Yeah, it's just a real tight tolerance and the powder coat has taken up all of that tolerance. So let me get a file and ream this hole out and then we should be good. Okay, I'm back and I found the secret. <laughs> one, of my, uh, one of my old man's carbide, I don't know what you call these, <laughs> porting bits. I used them to port heads and stuff like that as good a job as I can do with it. but. Uh, that thing actually made quick work of this and you can see everything is going through now. So back to my original statement. Now that you can actually see what's going on, the camera is on the inside of the car. So you can see I'm bringing this up. Our end link goes on the outside of the car. I'm using the closest hole. The bolt is going in from the outside and then our nut. And our top mount, uh, the torque specification was 120 foot-pounds. 
Uh, there's no specification on this. I'm just going to tighten a snot out of it. But uh, yeah, so we'll do that. We'll go ahead and do both sides for that. And then I'll show you guys how to adjust these and the way that UMI says to set them up and how I'm going to set it up to start. So as far as how to adjust mechanically, it's pretty obvious guys. You loosen this nut, you loosen that nut, you turn this guy, you turn it one way to make the end link longer and put more pressure on that side. You turn it the other way to make it shorter and put less pressure on that side. Now, here's the thing. This is the driver's side end link. You are not gonna touch this. You can go ahead and lock this down tighten both these nuts up really tight, you are never going to adjust the driver's side end link. All adjustments are gonna be done from the passenger side. With that being said, it kind of makes you wonder why they even put an adjustable link on the uh, driver's side. You would think they'd just make a solid link and say to heck with it, or you know, tack, uh, tack a little weld on the nuts on that side or something. But here are the instructions for initial preload setup per UMI. And it should be noted that I'm not really following these instructions per se because, well, I'm a glutton for punishment and I like to play around with stuff. So here we go. So here's what they tell you to do. They want you to have the car sitting on level ground, which my garage is not. My garage actually has a slope to it. So can't really do that anyway without taking the car out in the driveway. Uh, jack the front of the car up until the front tires just start to come off the ground approximately a half inch. So you're jacking the front of the car up until your tires are, you know, just a half inch off the ground, right? Then what they want you to do is measure from the ground to the bottom of your door jams on both sides. They do not specify the front of the door jams or the rear. I'm gonna assume they're talking about the rear of the door jam. So you're just gonna measure from the ground up to the door jam right here and they want you to adjust the passenger side end link until the passenger side door jam is approximately one sixteenth of an inch higher than the driver's side the reason they're doing that is because of what i said earlier uh, most v8 cars they already know you're going to want more preload on the passenger side because that's the side that tends to dip uh, you know, just because of the rotation of the engine, the way the torque's applied, uh, the passenger side always seems to go down first. So they want you to put more preload on the passenger side. Me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to crank that, uh, I'm going to crank that end link on the passenger side a little bit. Like I said, uh, my garage is unlevel. I mean, the, the floor actually slopes. If you've seen any of my videos where I'm pulling engines in here, you've noticed that my engine hoist tries to lean over all the time it's kind of dangerous actually but it's what i deal with so it wouldn't do me any good to take measurements in here um right now you know i got a full driveway i can't get the car outside to do it so i'm just going to put a little preload on that side and we'll roll with it i do want to say even with no preload just solely because this bar is so much stiffer so much stronger uh, even if you adjusted both sides equally you're going to see a drastic difference uh, you know, it's already going to be transferring more power over to the driver's side. Uh, but, you, you know, you are going to need that preload. Now, in the future, when you get to the track and you're playing with this thing, um, you know, this is what you're going to do. It's pretty much what I just told you. Um, it says if, the v if you get to the track and you're taking off, if the vehicle is pulling to the driver's side, then you want to shorten the passenger side end link. If the vehicle is pulling um, pulling to the passenger side, then you want to lengthen uh, the passenger side end link. At no point should you make any adjustments to the driver's side end link, and that's what I was telling you guys earlier. You're gonna make all your adjustments on the passenger side here. You're not gonna be doing any adjusting over here on the driver's side. Now listen guys, You've heard people talk about steering the car for, or steering from the back of the car. And, you know, this is one of the ways you do that. You know, when the car takes off, especially, you know, if you're pulling the front wheels a little bit, and that's kind of what it's talking about. If, you know, your, your front end's coming off the ground and the car starts going this way, 
this is going to let you dial it in, you know, to kind of keep it straight. So that way, when you are pulling those freaking 60 foot wheelies, the car keeps tracking straight instead of going to one side or the other when you obviously can't steer because your front wheels are in the air. Last thing I got to say is don't forget to grease those fittings that I showed you earlier in the video. Uh, you want to make sure you get a little grease in there. Just pump just enough in there that maybe you start to barely see it come out, you know, the edge. Uh, you don't want to just, you know, blow grease out everywhere. But there you have it, guys. That's how you install the UMI Drag Racing Adjustable Anti-Roll Bar in your third gen Camaro or Firebird. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Share it with a friend or a group if you think it might help somebody else out. Check out the Chaos Theory Camaro playlist for more UMI product installs. Then get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.